Have you ever been tired of your own bull That's me. After a summer of chaotic fun, no routine, and feeling overwhelmed, I saw myself slipping into some bad old habits. Not sleeping, relying on sugar for energy, inconsistent workouts, and just high levels of anxiety which triggered my OCD tendencies and, and I, I need to change this. Now I've seen this mysterious challenge called 75 hard. Let me explain the rules. For 75 days, you will do two workouts. Drink a gallon of water, follow a diet, read 10 books a day and take a progress photos. If you fail once, you have to start over and do it 75 days in a row. And yeah, that's a hard no for me. One, cause a lot of the rules don't align with me. Two, even if they did, I honestly don't think I could do it because I love to make excuses for myself. I'm good with a good 30 days, but 75? Oh yeah, there's no alcohol or sugar. Yeah, that's... <sighs> But I'm desperate at this point, so I'll give it a go. It is September 14th and Monday I'm gonna start 75 hard and I've never been drawn to do 75 hard. For some reason, I'm like, you know what? That kind of sounds like what I need right now. But the protocols aren't really relevant to my life. Like I wanted something that seemed attainable, that would align me more with my goals and was just like some stuff I'm struggling with. So these are my 75 hard. The two day workouts I'm swapping with one workout that's either cardio, resistance, or simply stretching that I'll use for rest days, plus a daily hot girl walk. Instead of a gallon of water, I'm gonna attempt to be in bed for eight hours a day, swapping, following a diet with eating something high in iron every day because my blood work recently said I was low in iron. No alcohol. I'm doing no unplanned alcohol. Social events that I've planned in the future, like Thanksgiving, Halloween, and my best friend's birthday are okay, but no just random drinks throughout the week. Reading 10 pages, I'm swapping with working on a new song for at least 10 minutes every day. I'll keep the progress pictures simply as a way to track what day I'm on. Take the weekend to get my environment set up. Do the classic. I'll start Monday. Which I will. I wish the other person like, start tomorrow. I'm like, eh, I'll start Monday. Day one. Seventy-five hard. Let's go. Day number one, Monday, we're feeling motivated. We got our coffee, let's go. Workout, no alcohol, iron, sleep, club. <laughs> Just kidding. Club, another club, another club. If you wanna know how I'm feeling, I'm nervous. So far I've done my workout number one and walked. I walked here in the sun to get some iron into my diet. I usually make egg bites as part of my breakfast lately and I threw in some ground bison. It hasn't been too hard, but there's been a few times where there's just that little oop, oop. It's kind of like you can just see where the habit is and you kind of just gotta be like, nope, nope. Nope, getting in the habit or remembering these habits I'm trying to build. But so far, it's been pretty easy because it's only 10 a.m. <laughs> I got really emotional on the way home because I was like, I did it and I didn't think I would. I just have so many bad vices. I try not to be so hard on myself, but sometimes I'm like, oh, it's so exhausting. So much effort and so much like self-hatred in a day. I was just accountable to myself today and it felt really good. I sat down to eat all my meals. I worked on music. I got enough sleep. I even went into sauna after work and stretched. I got my workout in and now hopefully I get to bed at a good time uh, so the day's not done. And I haven't picked my skin in a couple days. And that seems like nothing. I honestly don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've gone a day without picking my skin in 15 years. There's hope for me. I didn't think there was. I thought I'd be like this forever. Oh, this is so many one. Why am I getting sad? I just, I really always thought I was broken. <sighs> I'm pretty broken, but you know. I'm not unfixable. I don't think this 75 hard thing is magic, but I do think I waited till I was ready to like do something like this and just really be like, Kelty, I've done a lot of work. Maybe that's why I was like, I've done so much work that I can finally do this. That's why it's emotional. I've finally done so much work that I did this. I've made it through one day. I just have to do it one more day tomorrow. 75 more times. <laughs> 9.30. And it's 9.20. I'm in bed. And I never get into bed at this time. We're gonna able to. I started off 100% and I was feeling great. I was kicking butt, but that was when life was normal. Today was tough. 
<laughs> not picking and not just going to get chocolate and not just going to go overdo on energy drinks. Today was a very emotionally draining day. And I like my toxic vices in those moments. So begins travel, work, and holidays, and things start to just not be as easy. Day 10, I had to take a red eye to Toronto, so suddenly that eight hours of sleep and this whole routine I had was about to be thrown way off. I got absolute maximum sleep I could. I slept for three hours at home, Uber to the airport, tried to sleep in the Uber, slept on the ground at the airport, and slept the entire flight here. So like all in all, I think I only got six hours, but I did my absolute best. There was no late night scrolling. I laid in bed at home at nine. Because of that, I'm gonna say it counts because old Kelty would have just been like, ah, three hours, I'm fine. Like I wouldn't have slept at home, I would have just gone to the airport, done a little power nap for an hour in the plane and just lived off Red Bull. So this forced me to actually prioritize sleep over buying a monster at the airport. I'm determined to do this even when traveling and it's a crazy day. This is why I kind of like things like 75 hard, not those specific roles, but it's like for my own well-being, if I do these six things, even when traveling, they're kind of simple, I'll feel happy. I got one restaurant I miss so much in Toronto was Impact Kitchen and they got this like organic grass-fed beef oh and so i got like a rice bowl what i'm thinking with iron is like red meat like once a week other meats that are higher in iron too every day and then like non-meat options like spinach and stuff like that for the first time in my entire life i haven't picked my skin for a full week that's my coffee brewing but I'm back in Vancouver for a week and my routine feels dialed in. I'm starting to feel some momentum after shockingly being able to stick to these protocols even when traveling for work. Walks, sleep, workouts, getting my iron in, check, check, check. Then off to Edmonton for a Canadian Thanksgiving. Back in Edmonton means one thing, Alberta beef baby. And my one planned night out with the besties for Friendsgiving, then some wholesomeness with the family to cleanse my soul. Two weeks out for my first half marathon. And now it's dark when I run. Now one of the easiest ways to make a habit stick is make it easy, enjoyable. And the one habit I'm definitely struggling the most with is eight hours of sleep. Why? Sleeping's boring. You sit there with your eyes closed. I hate it. Oh, and every night I get eaten by the couch in this position and no part of me wants to get up to walk into there. So I mindlessly scroll for hours. Here's how I'm combating it. Step number one to create a night routine that makes me crave actually crawling into bed. Shower. Dim the lights, skincare, put on a very chill show, make my apartment a little cold, because when my eight sleep mattress warms up, I'm so excited to crawl into bed. And if you're like my partner and that sounds repulsive, you can make it cold, so you crawl into a cold, chilled bed. According to fitness world king himself, Huberman. Because I sleep on an eight sleep. Temperature needs to drop for optimal sleep, but I hate that. I don't want a cold bed, but just like how we have to hide vegetables in pasta sauce for a toddler, my eight sleep mattress drops cold when I'm asleep, so I don't notice, but it's improving the quality of my deep and REM sleep. It also tracks your sleep, has an autopilot that adjusts the temperature to keep you asleep, and a vibrating alarm so you peacefully wake up instead of I'm sorry for that trauma. It is a premium luxury product and I love it, but I've said it before and if there's something that has been the best return on investment has been investing in my sleep because the sleep is truly the foundation to anything. Because if we can't sleep, we can't function. If we can't function, well, nothing's happening. And if you're interested in eight sleep, I got a promotion for you guys. If you click the link down in my bio, eightsleep.com slash Kelty and use the code Kelty, you will get $300 off your pod cover. Thank you, Eight Sleeps, for sponsoring this video. It's October. So what are we gonna make? Chili.
But I realized I had a brown bison left. How's everybody? <laughs> Just finished up week four of 75 hard, my 75 hard, and I kind of fell off. Cause I always used to have this mantra of, I read it somewhere, never miss two days. And I don't know, sometimes I'm really good at streaks. I did a run streak and sometimes I'm really good at doing everything for 30 days, but sometimes life it's too much. I take on so much that like it's not possible and then I get discouraged and I fall off. So I kind of felt myself slipping into that. Like I did it twice of, you can't miss two days in a row. And if you miss a day, you do, you have to do it twice the next day. Uh, so, you know, whether it be, I missed my stretching, I didn't have iron rich food and there's just a couple things and yeah, I doubled up on it the next day, but I always feel like you're so dialed in and then you kind of let stuff happen, a few more things and then you fall off and then you just throw it away. And I'm kind of was at that stage and I'm proud of myself because even though I picked up my skin, even though didn't eat perfectly, even though I kind of missed a couple workouts, I decided to like, okay, just get back into it and how I've kind of handled it the last month, cause it's been crazy. I've traveled to LA, Edmonton, Toronto, Vancouver, Vancouver and now Sweden like all within a month and it's just been overwhelming and realizing sometimes the best thing you can do is like the smallest amount so even if your goal wasn't work out an hour every day sometimes like five minutes is better than nothing just to keep the streak and that's how I did it with my run streak like not every run was 20k or 5k like some runs when I was injured was literally 50 meters and I think I really was doing this so half-assed that I felt like a big failure but I think for this last half of this video I'm going to attempt to do everything every day and I'm gonna keep it up. But on some days it might even just be as simple as like opening up with Ableton and trying one vocal thing, or it might just be a 10 second stretch and that might be all it is just to keep the streak. But I think that's the only way I'm gonna get through this. It's a little less chilly, a bit more. <laughs> mm. I needed more liquid, but I'm not mad about it. Coming up next, we have the blue. Oh, 5k. Shin hasn't reopened, so you know what? Woo! Woo! We're just close to 12 kilometers. I finished. I was able to sprinkle. Yay, my besties! I'm so lucky! Definitely. The day after my half marathon. <laughs> Look how I'm walking. Oh, my leg. Sweden to visit Meg's just for a week, short and sweet, a lot of yummy iron rich food, and I'm happy to announce I found a brand new gym in Sweden that I love. Okay, it's day 50 of 75 hard and I hit a roadblock. I've been using this app to track it, and I'm in Sweden now, so I had to switch to my Swedish stuff SIM card app store, and it's not available on the app store. Like an Apple Watch, when you forget it, the workout doesn't count, I'm canceling this challenge because I can no longer track. Kidding. Very poorly delivered joke. I'm just gonna find a new way to track. I have all my progress photos every day, so that's a good way of just like having the numbers. But I think I'm just gonna hand write something for the last 25 days. Just for the flow of the video, it's kinda, I had all this nice little app, I had it all going and then just changes halfway through. It's a little not TikTok aesthetic perfect. Actually, it's quite TikTok. It's not Instagram, Pinterest worthy. Okay, it's week eight and I don't know. I've just started waking up every day and being a bit more like you or her. Like I've worn those things that I bought and don't wear because I'm like, today's not a good enough day. T yesterday I wore the cutest outfit. Cutest outfit. I didn't take an Instagram photo. I didn't even see anyone. And it just felt so good that I'm like, this is a fit. I'm dressing up simply for me. And what? I got so much work done. 
I got my workouts in. I got my work. I worked on my music. I'm just every day saying I deserve to show up as the version of myself I want to. Does that make sense? Like you almost feel like you don't deserve those things. And, and I felt sleepy at 8.30 and crawled into bed at nine. Nine. Who is she? On my eight sleep mattress, 100% sleep score. 100 in routine, quality, time. I've never had that. Ever. And it's sunny in Vancouver. I was talking to my professor yesterday and we were just both talking about people who overwork themselves, myself included. And even though like, even this challenge, I'm like, ugh. I wasn't like 100% perfect versus there's people who do 75 hard and they're dialed in. And I'm not saying like, and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sound weak and they're like better than me. It, it's true, there's accountability when you're not perfect, but at the same time, there's also, sometimes when I'm doing too much and I'm overworking myself and I have a thousand things on my plate, I'm not doing anything well, so I feel like I'm failing. So my rationale is take on more things. And of course that doesn't make any sense, but I think anyone who's like very a personality, very goal orientated because of childhood trauma, maybe this resonates. So I feel 75 hard is definitely that. And that's why I kind of reframed it. But I just want to say that because I think there is sometimes, sometimes there's times you need to kick, kick yourself in the butt and just be accountable. And sometimes you're doing too much. So you take on more and that's why you're failing. Going into my last week of 75 hard, this reel hit a little too close to home that my friend Joelle sent. Because the last few weeks, like I've been getting everything done, but I feel like I'm failing, but I'm doing so much, but I feel like I'm getting nothing done. And this just reshaped, because the reel pretty much says, it's a girl sitting there and saying, her therapist said, trying to be a good partner, good at your job, good at your health, good at your finances, good at your work, good at your passion, good at your recovery, good at your meditation, sounds exhausting. I'm like, that's so true. I'm someone who tends to take on everything and I wanna succeed at everything and I have a growth mindset. I do know the more you do, there'll be like pressure points in life, hard work, and it seems too hard, it seems overwhelming, and then you'll break through and that becomes easier. Like fitness is like that, music is like that. It's like, it's just a little too much for you, and then your body adapts and you get better, and that's how you build willpower and you build momentum. And But there's also this, am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? And I don't know the line. And I think many times in this challenge, I was doing so much. And then because I was doing everything, could technically not do everything 100. I felt like I was failing, but still when I look at the scheme of things, I have good health, I have a YouTube, I get videos that every week. I get songs made. I'm passing my grades. My boyfriend hasn't broke up with me. I have time with my friends. I call my mom like, yeah, I'm not a hundred at everything, but I'm getting everything done. I guess just reframing it. I'm still trying to figure this out of where is the, you're doing more and you're working hard and you're growing and you're getting better and you're adapting, but you're in that uncomfortable and learning that the uncomfortable is good. But then also, when are you people pleasing? When are you doing too much? When are you spreading yourself so thin so nothing's actually getting done? I'm kind of that place in my life of finding where should my focus be? It's feeling better. It's, it feels like I'm over this little hurdle that of overwhelm I was the last two weeks. And it just feels, still have to do the same. It seems hard, but it seems doable. It's the final day. The world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream. Here's my little iron hack. Um, I've just been adding cocoa to my teas or sometimes coffee. Seventy-five hard. 
it was hard. There was many ups and downs, but why I love this and why I recommend doing things like this, even though I don't really believe in 75 hard, I think it's the concept. I think it's the concept of telling yourself you're gonna do something and doing it. This is where you build confidence and willpower is actually a muscle. A book I read several years ago and I always recommend this book, Grit by Angela Duckworth. It is fascinating. It's the science behind grit. And I'll summarize it real fast. Willpower is a muscle, you can build it. No one's born with willpower, maybe a little bit more than others, but pretty much the more you do harder stuff, the easier it gets. So that's why things like 75 hard work, because after a couple days it's hard, but then it gets easier and then it becomes a habit. And once it's a habit, it's so ingrained in you. And that's just human nature. And it's something I just need to remind myself every blue moon. And I've done these challenges. That's why I don't like doing the, I didn't want to do 75 hard because it was another challenge I didn't care about. So as soon as it was done, threw it out the window, I don't care. And it's not even like, it does build willpower, but it's like, ah, who cares? Something about actually doing something I wanted to do. And this is just so nice going into 2024, going to this new series I'll be starting at the end of January. I think that's just a really nice place. I'm excited. And if you're in this place, you don't have to do 75 hard. If you want to, it's nice because it's just very simple. It's just like six rules you have to follow. They're not too out of this world, but do something. Even if it's as small as having an extra glass of water a day and do that for 30 days. And after 30 days, you'll just have momentum and you'll have that willpower built up and it will build over time. And then suddenly you can add in a healthy meal and suddenly you can add in running five minutes. And then I just feel that's all it is. I don't think there's anything special about me. There isn't. When people are like, how do you, have you done these challenges? How do you do stuff? It's not, I've just done it. So each time it gets easier. You have more systems, you have willpower and just realize willpower is a muscle and 75 days of doing something in a row builds confidence in that willpower muscle. So would recommend, but also I don't love the rules of 75 hard. Some of them seem useless to me. So why don't you make up your own 75 hard or your own 66 or your own 30? Just pick a number, check it off, have a way to track it. This was great. This was the last little momentum to next week's big challenge, which has been a year in the making. I gave up the 12 dirtiest habits I have over the last year. And you'll see that next week. Have a great day. Good pet dog. Love you guys. Bye.